this video, I'm going to show you step-by-step -step instructions on how to replace the front screen on the Samsung S22. If you can, begin by powering down the device, although we've not got the passcode for this one. So we'll go straight onto the hot plate and we'll turn it off with the battery when we get a chance. You're going to leave this thing set on the hot plate for about five minutes and I've got mine set to 85 degrees C. If you don't have a heat plate like we do, then you can use a heat gun or a hairdryer to achieve the same effect. It might just take a little bit longer. Once it's been sat on there for a few minutes, we're going to stick a suction cup on the back and then, oh, we can tell straight away that this one's been off before. But if you have trouble, just remember on the S22, it's a plastic back cover and so it's very, very difficult to break it. However, take your time, use the suction cup to lift it up, a little bit of alcohol to loosen the adhesive around the edges and then a plastic prying tool to help you along. Although I've just made that look way too easy. I'll try and link another video which explains it better in, in the description below. Now let's go down to the workbench. I think that's an aftermarket part, to be honest. Anyway, now that we're into the device, we're gonna take a crosshead screwdriver and remove all the screws that are holding down these shields up at the top half of the foam. Just take note if there's any what are different sizes, like this black one in the top right, sorry top left corner i believe there's 11 in total on this one and i always find that some of them will come off with the magnetic screwdriver and some of them just stick to where they are we'll just use the tweezers to capture the ones what got left behind i'm not sure what this little warranty sort of sticker is it looks like it's probably a refurbished device or reconditioned because that's somebody else's voice sticker we'll get that out of the way so we can get this last screw out of it and then we're going to use the plastic spudger to disconnect the wireless charging coil which will now mean that we can lift up this metal shield and fold that back at the first opportunity we can we'll disconnect the battery as well as this little cable here and this one over this side like that we'll remove this plastic shield here and it looks like the front camera yeah this one's definitely a recon phone or something Normally you'll find that the front camera is, is glued into place and the easiest way to remove those is by using a blade like this and chopping either side of the camera. Now obviously this one has been removed before so it's not the best example of showing you the full details of the repair but I hope it'll make it sort of clear. We've just got this one last cable here to remove and then we don't have to worry about removing these because we're going to disconnect everything together and remove it all at once once we've got this subboard removed there are nine more crosshead screws holding this in place go ahead and remove all nine of them releasing the loudspeaker at the bottom and the subboard with all those screws out of the way i just use the plastic spudger to lift up that plastic cover and you can see how i removed the wireless coil and the speaker all together because it is stuck to it there. Although you can peel it off, I prefer to just leave it all stuck together. Put that to one side now and disconnect this flex cable down the bottom here. Remove the SIM tray from the bottom of the phone and then remove these three black screws that hold the subboard in place. We should now be able to lift up this subboard, so I'll just pry underneath it and sort of slide it out from the bottom. That'll allow us now to remove the whole of the logic board, still attached to the cables, so that it's ready to transfer into our new chassis. The final part of the puzzle is the battery in the middle, and the easiest way to remove that is to soak either side of the battery with some isopropyl alcohol let that soak in for a good five minutes or so, and then use the suction cup again to stick it onto the battery and pull it out. And again, they've used poor quality adhesive on this one. You will find it's a lot more difficult than that to remove. As I said before, I believe this is a reconditioned phone and some substandard adhesives have been used. So as usual, we're gonna go for a genuine Samsung service pack with this one. And I had to check this one because this is actually the G901U. Um, so this one actually came with a new battery in it. So we just peel off the film. We've got the ear speaker already attached to this one. 
but we will need to put the little antennas back here and here as well as the volume buttons here so let's start with the volume buttons if they came out as one like that then just stick them all in together but if the plastic thing came off with it just make sure that that goes in as well so with these buttons right you've got to sort of pop them out from the inside so the easiest way is with some nice sharp tweezers and just give them a little poke until they sort of come out but they are a bit awkward and then in terms of swapping them back you just push them into this little hole here make sure that you get a good click and then repeat the same with the volume buttons Now that they're installed, we'll go ahead and install the first of the two antennas. So we've got this one just here. We've got the two little black screws that hold that in place. Then we've got that other one just in that top right corner. Drop that down and make sure that it's secured properly. Just make sure that the flex cables are out of the way so that we can go ahead and install the logic board now. And then begin reconnecting all the connectors. Start off with these volume flexors down here, then the antenna. These can be awkward to line up. And then we'll leave the battery connector until the very last thing. Moving down to the bottom, we'll get the subboard installed now. Just slide that in, charger port first, make sure it sits nice and flat. Now we've got the three little black screws that hold this in place. Make the flex cable for the screen here. Now go ahead with the subboard cover and loudspeaker down at the bottom. You can see there where it's not quite sat in right. If you use the back end of the tweezers, you can just help that along a little bit before re-securing all the screws that we took out previously. Don't forget, if you like repair content just like this, make sure that you subscribe to the channel. And for those who don't subscribe, let it be known that your phone will break if you don't. Now that they're secured down, let's move back up to the top of the phone. We'll reconnect the battery now. Put this metal frame down and the little connector here for the wireless charging coil. And finally, this little plastic cover goes on top of everything, just here. I think that it's better off going underneath the metal frame. That's how it's meant to go. Should have done that in reverse. And now all the screws that hold that into place. If you're having a go at this repair yourself, let me know how you get on in the comments below. And for the part that I use in this one, I'll try and remember to stick a link in the description below so that you can buy this genuine Samsung service pack part. Please note though, I usually only supply a link for a UK supplier, so if you're outside of the UK, it may not work. Don't forget to put your SIM tray back in the phone. And this would be a good time to test that the device boots before sealing up the back cover. The Samsung logo means it's good news. I've already applied the genuine Samsung back cover adhesive on this one available from the same supplier that I'll link in the description below and we'll just go ahead and secure this back down starting off in the top left corner and making sure that it's sat nice and even all the way around that just about completes this repair of this Samsung S22 screen replacement thank you for watching and see you next time